I would like to talk about this book. It's When the uh, Impossible Happens, and you wrote that uh, last year. And you have many different uh, uh, examples of non-ordinary states of consciousness in here, but one I'd like to talk about briefly is When Science Becomes Scientism. And you had a brief encounter with Carl Sagan. Could you tell us a bit about this and just give us the essence of what that encounter was like? You were talking you know, to him about, go ahead. Carl Sagan, of course, was a world-known you know, scientist, uh -huh. astronomer in his own field. Mm -hmm. And for some, uh, to me, sort of incomprehensible uh, reasons, he mm -hmm. went on this crusade that he would sort of uh, eliminate from the world everything that he considered irrational. Right. He didn't understand that when uh, there was such uh, an emphasis put on, uh, on rationality during the Enlightenment, you know, I thought what was uh, rejected was everything that's not rational. And yes. Not everything that's not rational is irrational. Right. There are things which are transrational. Yes. The mystical experience is transrational. It's not yes. irrational. The, mm -hmm. the mystics can think, you know, mm -hmm. perfectly well, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they also have a knowledge of some other uh, realms uh, that mm -hmm. other people have not had not so experienced. So you had an encounter with him once, and he he was just. Uh, you know, just irate when he heard about transpersonal psychology, that somebody would try to put put together spirituality and uh, science. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted a meeting, a confrontation. So mm -hmm. Christina, my wife, myself, mm -hmm. and his wife, and he, and uh, John Mack, who is now dead, who's a, who's a, his friend who was a psychiatrist and psychoanalyst from Harvard, we met. And he started telling me, you know, you, you have degrees and people listen to it, to you. Uh, you just, you know, cannot cannot spread this kind of delusions. Uh, you have responsibility. Mm -hmm. And he started g giving me examples. He said, you know, there was a there was a horse in Germany called Smart Hans, <laughs> and they claimed he could do mathematics, and this was a hoax. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and in Italy, they dug out a a f big figure, they claimed it was a petrified giant, and that was a hoax. And he continued like this, and I stopped him. I said, Carl, this is not what we are talking about. He says, well, what are we talking about? I said, we are talking about the ontological status of these transpersonal experiences, mystical experiences. Can near they be... Near-death experiences and so on. Yeah. yeah. Can they be psychedelic experiences and so on? Can they be explained as pathology of the brain? Or do they reveal some really existing dimensions of reality? Mm -hmm. And he said, "Give me examples." And I gave him a lot of examples. With, you know, people, people um, identifying with animals and getting insight into animals, knowing mm -hmm. what it is like uh, to be an eagle, to get the body image of the eagle, knowing the people the, having how near-death experiences and leaving their body. And uh, well, this too bad. He said he just flatly said that did not happen. Well, I, I finally he said he. Poo poo this. I said, oh, you know, American children watch television for many hours a day and they just see a lot of things. And in this non ordinary state, it must all get jangled up and something comes mm -hmm. out. But you essentially cannot experience anything that did not come from your sen uh, sensory experience. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I gave him this example that we talked about, about the consciousness leaving body in mm -hmm. near death experiences and mm -hmm. people being able to s see, they continue to perceive. Consciousness. Right. I gave him specific example, Michael Sabum's book, Re Recollections of Death. He's mm -hmm. a cardiosurgeon who studied his own patients who had near-death experiences. And so I said, well, what do you think about this? And he says, this, of course, didn't happen. <laughs> I said, it didn't happen? You know, um, Michael Sabum wrote a book about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's your explanation here? And there was a long pause, and then he said, I'll tell you. There are many cardiosurgeons in the world. Nobody would have known the guy. So he made up a story. It's a PR trick. Mm -hmm. I said, Carl, PR trick. A cardiosurgeon makes up a story like this mm -hmm. to boost his professional image. Yeah. I mean, he must have hesitated for a couple of years if he, if he could mm -hmm. publish that because right. he knew he would become a mm -hmm. laughingstock for people yeah. like you.